suspicious to me. Somebody's muzzling in on our territory. Maybe it's a 10th Avenue gang. Come on, we can take them. Do we have to tell you you can't come down here? Well, I'm here and I'm in the gang, too. It says so right there. Come on, Amsgray. Nick, I'm staying right here. That's what you think. Come on, beat it. All right, all right, I'm going. And remember, this place is for men only. Let's bring the meeting to order. James, she must think this is the Ladies' Aid Society. Ah, quit your beefing. She's gone, ain't she? Let's get down to business. Yeah, we got work to do. All right, now here's the setup. I've got one of the fruit warehouses over on 10th Avenue all cased up. It's a cinch to take. They say that fresh fruit is fine for growing kids. <laughs> it's sure fine for me. How about it, man? Are you with me? Okay, we're on our way. Nice bunch of oranges and avocados you got up there. Yeah, what's that got to do with you? Oh, nothing. So it's you again. Beat it. Nick, I heard all about your scheme, and if you don't let me join the gang, I'll... Will you? Not if I'm in the gang. Okay, you ask for it. You're in. Wait here. I let that stuff and tossed it in there. What for? Well, when they all run in here to see what the trouble is, that'll leave us a clear field for the fruit wagon. But you're liable to set fire to the place. You're crazy. It's a cement floor. Come on. Come down out of there. Come on up and get me. Wait a minute, I'll come down. Now, what'd you do that for? Just to see the engine roll. A firebug, eh? Who are those other kids? What kids? Now, don't give me that. I saw them running away. You're crazy. I was alone. Little wise guy, eh? Trying to cover up your pals. Come on along with me. I tell you I was alone. Come now, Marty. 
the officers saw three other boys. Well, I didn't. Besides, even if there were, do you think I'd squeal? Son, you're pretty young to be following the code of the underworld. Why don't you be sensible? Tell me who your friends were. I'm a lone wolf. You know, I may not look it now, but I was a boy once, very much like you. And I got into my share of scrapes, too. But this is worse than a scrape. You started a fire, damaged other people's property. You might have caused injury or death to any number of people. I didn't mean to do that. Well, what did you mean to do? Raid the fruit trucks with your pals? How many times do I have to tell you I didn't have any pals? Now, I want to be as lenient with you as I can, Marty. But you must realize that if you take this attitude, there's nothing for me to do but to send you to the reformatory. I guess I can take it. Well, I guess there's nothing else to do, officer. Come on, son. Donald will sit over there on my right, and Joe and Marv will sit on his right. Yes, Mr. Malone. And Miss McCoy? Well, she'll sit on my left, of course. And Mike Amara, well, he can sit next to her, too. Yes, sir. Now, I want everything the best, because these are my real pals. We grew up together. We get together like this every year. We call this our annual roundup. And this is the first time we've been together since I took over the club. So that's why I want everything perfect. I'll do my best to make it so, sir. I beg your pardon, Mr. Malone. Miss McCoy is ready to go on downstairs. Take care of everything. Yes, sir. I'm expecting some friends. I mean, show and tell the doorman to show them up through the private entrance. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cigarette Club has the honor of presenting Miss Helen McCoy. Things are coming my way. The things I never expected. Things are coming my way, and I'm no longer neglected. When you came into my life, cares went wide and high. Now I'm riding high, feel like shouting hooray. How long is it with me to stay? And things are coming my way. Oh, things are coming my way. Never expected things are coming my way, and I'm no longer neglected. When you came into my life, cares went by and high. Now I'm really riding high. I'm sorry to interrupt. Now sing hooray, for love is with me to stay. Well, I finally managed to get that party on the line. Good, I'll talk to him. Do you know who's calling? Not yet, sir. Mr. Brewster? Malone speaking. Yes, Malone, what is it? You know what it is. I have a check before me for $1,375. You stopped payment on it. So what? Hell, write me another check that won't bounce. Sorry, I can't do anything for you. I had too much of that bad liquor of yours and didn't know what I was doing. How do I know you didn't rig that wheel of yours? Oh, I don't have to rig my wheel. Percentage takes care of me. You know better than that. You won't get another dime, so you might as well go ahead and sue. You know you can sue for a gambling debt. Besides, that doesn't happen to be the way I operate. You must know I have other ways of collecting. You take this attitude? I'm just not paying off. Well, just think it over. The diamond there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Send diamond to me. Yes, sir. So 
something on your mind, Monty? I got a job for you, Frank. Is there anything I can do? Yeah, keep quiet. James Brewster doesn't believe in playing for keeps. Okay, we'll try and reason with him. He's a little fresh. Sold him down a bit. If you have to push him around, do it gently. Just, uh, you know, uh, teach him how to write a good check. We'll treat him like a brother. Where's he live? Circle House Terrace A. Be seeing you. Here we are. Well, what are we gonna do? We'll just give him a once-over let. A fine thing. You walked out on my number. Only duty could tear me away. What do you hear from the gang? They all coming? I think so. Look, there's something we've got to settle right now. And I think it's time. To talk about you and me? Helen, for the 47th time, I've told you how I feel. Are you sure? Sure about what? The number. You know, it seems to me it's the 48th. There were two times last week. Well, for the 49th... Will you stop your kidding? I'm not. I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm not. You wouldn't want me to say no when I'm still on the fence, would you? Still my chimera, huh? Marty, stick to your promise. Well, if it isn't going to be me... Well? It's got to be my chimera. Now, Marty, you... Because I'll never give up till I'm counted out. <laughs> Pardon me. But the master of ceremonies is paging you again, Miss McCoy. I'm coming. You'd better double check with the O'Maris. I'll see you later. Webster. Yes, sir? I want to get out of these working clothes. Uh, the Blue Sage? Yeah. The West 30th Precinct Police Station. The emergency squad. Sergeant Enders, emergency squad speaking. O'Mara? Which one? Hey, Mike, it's for you. What's the idea of jumping the gun? You're still on duty. Quiet! Hello. Hello, Marty, old so-and-so. Sure we'll be on time if we don't get a call before the next squad report. Keep your fingers crossed. So long. Thank you, sir. Get out of here. Hurry up with that lawnmower, will you? I'm on the last patch now. Five minutes to go. I'll lay you two to one, we get a call. Oh, stop being a pessimist. What's that? Look it up. Oh, play these. I would, too. Hmm. Why don't you guys shut up? Two blue ones. Call. I'll call it. Up four. Up eight. Oh. Oh. I'll call it. What does it mean when they're all one color? Oh, uh, why don't you cut it out? Want to cut it? Oh, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. I had a flush. A flush? You had a royal flush. I did? Uh. <laughs> Where are we going? To the circle house. Yeah, the electric sign on the roof broke loose and killed a man. <laughs> Can't you see that sign up there? It's liable to fall any minute. Come on, Jim. All right, boys, get out up there and light her up. Gangway, man. Back. What happened? The guy forgot the duck. That sign hit him right on the noggin. He never knew what hit him. What's his name? Jim Brewster. Thanks. All right, boys, clear this stuff out of here. Mike, take that table inside. Be careful you don't drop anything over. Mm, well, mate, forgot to be strolling around on the terrace. Who says he was strolling? That guy was sitting there having a drink when Bluey had happened. Yeah, with the wind blowing the rain all over him. When you get through being a detective, Mr. O'Mara, would you terribly mind taking a line up to the roof and tying off the rest of that sign to the chimney? Anything for you, teacher. Tom, Larry, take him by the hand and help him up. All right, boys, let's get this sign in here. Say, Larry, whip another man over that center there and we'll tie off here. Hey, what's this? 
the stanchion's been cut. Say, hey, Tom, look at this. What about it? Well, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. All right, finish up. I'll see you later. Okay, boys. That'll hold it till the repairmen arrive. Let's go. Say, Sarge. What is it now, Sherlock Holmes? This fellow Brewster, he was murdered. Why don't you stop playing detective? You're keeping me up. But, Sarge, I tell Why you... Why don't you lead the detective to the precinct, Dix? They're satisfied. Cigarette club, and don't spare the horses. Wait a minute. We got a little snooping to do first. You can do your snooping, but I'm going to Marty's party. Well, so am I, afterward. Don't you realize this is a chance for us to get in the detective bureau? What's the matter with the emergency squad? Haven't you got any ambition? Sure, but not to play cops and robbers. Hey, driver, drop me at the cigarette club. Your mystery will keep for an hour or so. Will you go back with me after the party? It's a deal. Come on, come on. Okay. The O'Mara brothers calling on Mr. Malone. He's expecting you. This way, gentlemen. Look, Joe. Can you imagine that tomboy turning out to be such a gorgeous creature? Now, am I right or am I right? You're right. Come on, Mike. You're in a hurry. Hey, do you mind waiting for the Christmas tree? <laughs> Hello, my fine feathered friend. Good evening, sir. May I have your coat? I'm sure I'll get the same one back. Yes, sir. Oh, hiya, Marty. Hiya, Mike. <laughs> Marty. Hiya, Joe. Yeah, I'm glad to see you. Thanks. <laughs> so I know from out of this tonight, this is just a meeting of the gang. Meet Joe Mara. Hiya, Joe. Mike, hi. Hiya, Mike. Hiya, Si. Hi, you look good. Thanks. Well, if it isn't the McCoy, the real McCoy. Hello, Mike. How are you, Helen? And Joe. Hi, Helen. Hiya, Marty. Well, how about a little drink? Lead us to it. <laughs> I'm afraid you'd be late. We got a call at 11.59 and we had a row. Rotten luck. Oh, maybe not so rotten. You see, I... Uh... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can the business. This is a party. Where's Jerry? He'll be here. He promised. Hello, Si. Good evening. They all here? Eh? Hey? We're all inside. Fine. There you are. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Marty. My, it's good to see you. Hello, everybody. Hiya. Sit right down here. Thanks. You're just in time. Fine thing. We've been waiting for hours. Well, now, maybe I'd believe that if I hadn't seen you two just barely beating me to the elevator. <laughs> Louis, cocktail. Now we're getting somewhere. Champagne for the unregenerates <laughs> and uh, sherry for Father Donovan. <laughs> well, the annual roundup is now in session. Okay? Okay. 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 Not at least until we've had a little night trip. Well, I don't want to break up your party, but I've got to be getting home. We've got to be getting along, too, Marty. A little business to attend to. Oh, no, you're not. Not until you have a spot of good old Irish. Well, just one. Atta, boy. Good night, Jerry. Joe. So long, Jerry. Mike, we have many happy returns of the day. Sure, we will. And remember, my turn next year. Oh. And this is mine. This year. Okay? Oh, okay. okay. Want a word with you, Jerry? Help us to everything. I'll be right back. Oh, thanks. Hey, what are you going to have, darling? I'll mix it. I think I'll have a champagne cocktail. I want to.
What is it, Marty? Look, Jerry. It's about that West Side Boys Club of yours. Oh, not mine. It belongs to the boys. <laughs> oh, sure, I know. You see, uh, I've had a pretty good year. And I thought maybe your, uh, I mean, the boys' club could use a gymnasium. Hmm, $5,000. Business must be good. I'm afraid I can't accept it, Marty. Oh, don't say that. It's honest money. If I don't get it, somebody else will. Oh, it isn't that. It's, it's just... Well, it's like this, Marty. The man who gives those kids a gym is going to be pretty much of a hero to them. I see. You want to be no party in making one out of a jailbird, eh? Oh, you're wrong about that part of it, Marty. Censure would come poorly from me. The well might have been in your shoes. You saved us all. Now, wait a minute. I deserve what I got. But the rest of you didn't. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, you taught us a lesson. That would start it out to be just kids' mischief. Might have led to something else. Well, then why don't you accept my money? Is it because I'm a gambler? All right. My name doesn't have to appear. Can't you give it as if from a friend? I know you don't approve of my racket. But don't turn down something that'll keep the kids off the streets. Can't you take it for them? You always were a good salesman, Marty. But I'm afraid I can't do it. Oh, just think of it. Punching bags, boxing gloves. Hot and cold showers and lockers. Why, if the kids of Hell's Kitchen had those things, very few of them would ever see the inside of a reformatory. I guess you're speaking from the heart, Marty. No, I'm not. I'm speaking from the head. I have enough competition in my business. All right, then. Just to narrow down your field of competitors, I'll take you up. Now you're talking. You are generous, Marty. Let's just say it's a kind of an insurance. In case, uh, what well, you know, I'm wrong about what goes on up there. All right. Maybe someday we might be able to call it the Martin Malone Gym. I hope so. Maybe. Well, thanks for everything, Jerry. And I'll be seeing you. Now, don't let's wait a whole year this time. Drop in like the others do. Sure I will. Good night, Marty. Good night, Jerry. Come on, Mike. Bottom's up. We gotta get going. What do you mean, going? Without asking me for a dance, either of you? All right, I'm first. Oh, but Mike, you said... Can't the sleuthing wait ten more minutes? <laughs> so he's still at it, huh? When are you gonna join the detective bureau, Joe? Maybe sooner than you think. I'll bet he's got a clue or something. You think you're kidding? Let me tell you, wise guy, something. A man was murdered tonight up in the swell apartment on Columbus Circle. Murdered? That's Joe's theory. The detectives reported it an accident. The guys that murdered this fellow Brewster wanted it to look like an accident. Wait a minute. Did you say his name was Brewster? Yeah. James Brewster. What's the matter, Marty? You know him? Well, he was a very good customer of mine. What makes you think he was murdered? A big electric sign fell on him, only it didn't just fall, it was pushed. After one of the supporting stanchions had been cut clean with a chisel. Now, why would anybody want to bump up a nice guy like Brewster? That's what we want to know. That's why we're going up there tonight, to check up. If we can break this case, they can't keep us out of the Bureau. Well, he's sure got that old ambition. So you're going to stand me up for a murder mystery? Not until I have that dance. Just a few more minutes. One dance. Okay, just one dance. Now you're talking. Go, down, go on downstairs and I'll be joining you in a minute. Come on, Helen. Sorry. Yes, sir. Get Diamond over here right away and let me know when he arrives. Yes, sir. And, uh, Call downstairs and tell the orchestra to keep playing until I tell them to stop. Now, hurry. Yes. You know, if I could afford it, I'd do this every night. If I had the same partner. Mike, you haven't changed a bit in 20 years. No, I'm on the level. Which explains, I suppose, why I see you so often. Once every six weeks. Well, you work nights. I work nights. What are you trying to get at? I'm just a cop. And I'm still the McCoy dean that always got in the gang's hair. Well, if you feel that way about it, we might as well get right down to it. You know, Helen, I was going to ask you. I'm sorry. So am I. This is the longest dance I ever set out in my life. Yeah, it's getting on my nerves, too. Hey, give me a cigar, Joe. Yeah. 
That gentleman's in your office now, sir. Oh, he is, huh? Excuse me a minute, Joe. Yeah, but hurry back, will you? We're leaving right after this dance. I won't be long. Where have you been? Celebrating? Now, don't get in the lather, Marty. Well, murder's a little out of my line, my friend. Murder? I heard it was an accident. Sure, boss, we covered up. I told you if you had to push him around, to do it gently. And then you go and kill him. Well, maybe we were a little rough, but I didn't know he had a bad picker. I'm sorry, it turned out this way. You're sorry? That's right, because now you'll never collect that money. Ah, oh, skip that. What happened? Well, when he didn't get up, I was a little worried. I figured he might have talked about stopping that check and the bulls might get curious. You see, he was bruised up a little. I told you not to bend that sap over his head. Quiet. Go on. I figured we had to make it look like an accident. The wind was blowing a bit, that sign was creaking. After all, it could blow down. To make it look good, we put Brewster under the sign, slipped a drink in his hand, and pushed the sign over on him. Personally, I thought it was a pretty good game. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he was marvelous. You would think out a way to involve the emergency squad, wouldn't you? So what? So two of my very best pals are on it, and they're suspicious of the whole setup. And they're hitting pretty close to it. They won't find out anything. I didn't leave my calling card. No, but you did leave the stanchion clean cut so that any dummy might know it wasn't an accident. Cut, did you say? That's what the Amera say. I thought I told you to spread those strands till they broke. I thought it'd be easier just to whack it off with a chisel. Remind me later to wring your neck. Ah, oh, save that. I'm chiseling away out of this jam. All right. The Ameras are your pals. Well, get to them. Put the fix in. The Ameras can't be fixed, so what? All right, then Sam and I'll get right back over there and really cover up this time. And use your heads this time. Right. And in the meantime, you get busy and stall those Ameras. That's great. You gum up the works, and now you've got the goal to ask me to fix things. You better, Marnie. We're all in this jam together. By the way, where's that Bruce's check? Oh, that? I burned it. Dance, are you, Joe? That's not a dance in there, that's a marathon. Joe, I was going to Now say... look, Marty, it's been swell. I don't want to be a crab, but. Well, this is important to me. You understand, don't you? Sure, I do. I'll get you a cab. Fine. All right, little lady. Oh, sorry. Get a cab for Mr. Mera and tip the driver off not to hurry. Yes, sir. Come on. Brother. I had a swell time, Marty. Thanks. Don't we always? Good night. So long, Joe. Get me a cab, quick. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Say, where did you learn to drive a hack? Correspondent school? Wise guy, huh? Maybe so, but a copper anyway. Yeah, well, it's different. Well, get going or I'll drive this hack myself. Yes, sir. Come on, I told you to step on it. This is fast. These old hacks will go. Sorry, Mr. Malone. Oh, I'll get out and walk the rest of the way. That's got it. I guess we're all right now. That ought to hold them. That's what you think.
Uh, all right, boys, it's all over now. Go ahead, move along. Hey, what's the matter? Well, a terrible thing just happened here. One of our boys has been killed. He fell off the roof there. Who was it? Well, it was a lad named Joe O'Mara, the emergency squad. All right, go on, I asked you to move along, move along. Will you please move along, get along with you. You know, it's funny about Marty, he's been gone about a half an hour. Oh, he's probably having a drink with Joe. Let's go round him up. Let's. Hi, Marty. Where you been? I've just been up the street. Where's Joe? Joe? Yeah, wasn't he with you? Oh, yes, yes. Um, he left a while ago. He told me to tell you that he'd call you later. Oh. Excuse me, I'm going to get on some dry clothes. Oh, look, Marty, we're going to leave anyway. I'll see you tomorrow. So long, Mike. Thanks a lot. Good night, Marty. Good night, Marty. I'll get the rest of you. There's a call for you, Mr. O'Mara. Who, me? Yes, Thanks. you can take it right here. Oh, probably Joe checking in with a large beef. Hello, will you switch that call for Mr. O'Mara to this phone, please? Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mike? Yeah. Listen, kid, I got bad news for you. It's about Joe. He fell off the Circle House roof. Dave. You sure? I'll be right over. Mike, what is it? It's Joe. He's dead. What happened? They say he fell off the Circle House roof. And I let him go alone. His hunch was right. Rooster was murdered. And so was Joe. You're a little unreasonable, and I don't like argument. But is it true that you dropped the entire investigation? We have checked and double-checked every angle of your brother's death. There is no evidence whatsoever that he met with foul play. I told you, Stooges, what Joe found there. Will you show more respect for your department? I'm sorry, sir. I guess this thing has got me down. I know, I can understand that. But you can't just drop the whole thing. O'Mara, we listened to your story. We searched for that cut stanchion. There was none. Naturally, the killers removed it when they found Joe checking up on them. Personally, I think your whole theory is fantastic. I don't care what you think. I know. I can appreciate your feelings, but there's nothing further we can do about it. Then transfer me to the Bureau and I'll do it. No matter, the case is closed. Thanks. What happened? Stone wall. The case is closed. Mike, maybe you'll resent my saying this, but don't you think you ought to consider the case closed, too? You know what I'll consider it closed. When they pay it off, for Joe. Mike, you're wrong. This thing's becoming an obsession with you. Call it anything you like, but I'm going to see this thing through. I know I'm right about that. Now you're being a stubborn, chip-on-the-shoulder Irishman. What you need is a little fresh air. And I'm right about that. Play the Red Queen on the Club King. Can't you be doing something else? Do you have to be kibitzing all the time? I don't know what I'd do without you. I think I'll go down and get a pack of cigarettes. Sit down. Fancy meeting you here. Hello, Marty. And yeah, I've been looking for you. So I heard. Yes, I figured you had. That's why you was so hard to find. What's on your mind? You ought to know. Look, Marty, I told you to stall that guy. Give us time to work. I did try to stall him. And when I got there, he was lying on the street, dead. It was him or me, Marty. It's a pity it wasn't you. You know Joe O'Meara was a friend of mine. What could I do? He had his heater on us. He had us right for murder. It was him or us. And you too. Ah, oh, shut up. You hired us to do your dirty work. What for? Just to play tough? I didn't hire to kill anybody. Look, Marty, when you're in a racket, you can't holler copper. And if the spot comes up, you've got to go the whole route. I guess I asked for this when I hooked up with you. Joe O'Meara. We were kids together. And why blame me or Sam? All right, you rats. You win. But stay out of my way, because I might change my mind. Where are you going? I'm going to get out of here before he does change his mind. Don't be a fool. I got plans for us.
strictly a gag to keep the cops busy while the gang operates. Okay, take it up with the detective bureau. It's not our headache. Those dimwits. They think I'm crazy. Maybe they got something there. Why, you... Take it easy, Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. I didn't mean anything. Sergeant in his emergency squad speaking. Explosion? All right, where is it? Rear is Cigarette Club, 100 Swing Lane. Cigarette Club? Yeah, and no discussions either. All right, men, let's roll. Have you found out anything yet? What's that? What's left of a time bomb. Know anybody that's got it in for you, Monty? No, I don't. I told you that before. No enemies? Not that I know of. Where is it? Miss McCoy's dressing room. Dave, Mike, and Brown come with me. The rest go around the back. Marty, where's Helen? She's upstairs. Is she all right? Why, sure. She was on the floor singing at the time. What happened? The boys say it's a time bomb. What's all this? Well, I was having her room redecorated. Hello, Mark. Hello, Mike. Don't touch anything. No, don't touch a thing. Don't worry, just looping around. Look, Cap. Open like a can of sardines. We know all that. Yeah? Then you should know that the guys that soup this placed that time bomb to cover it up. Hey, maybe you're right at that. Must hurt you to admit it. You think it's an inside job? That's it. Do you mean somebody from my club pulled this robbery? Yeah. Got any idea who it might have been? You had some painters working in that dressing room. Where did they come from? Well, they dropped in last week to ask if I had a job for them. What were their names? I don't know. You didn't know them, huh? No. Say, they could have set up the time bomb after they finished work today. Yeah, they could have. Yeah. Well, I'm glad none of my employees are involved. I'll phone headquarters. Suppose we all meet in your office in 10 minutes, Malone. Maybe you can help us out. That's all right with me. I'll go see how the boys are coming along. I hope I'm wrong about a lot of things that are going through my mind. About what? A man who plans explosions to attract attention in one spot while he operates in another. Does that mean anything to you? I get it. But Mike, don't jump at conclusions. There's a chance you might be wrong. Think it over. I will, Marty. Thanks. Mr. Malone. May I see you for a moment, privately? Murph, what time did this happen? Well, the call came in about 11.40. What's all the mystery? I didn't have a chance to see you before, sir, but I've a theory about that explosion. Now, you're not going to tell me that you think I did it too, are you? Why, of course not, sir. But I do think Diamond had something to do with it. What? Yes, I was in your office early this afternoon, balancing your checkbook. Go and get to it, get to it. Well, I saw Diamond and that other fellow were... Sam, yes, yes, yes. Yes, well, they were talking to those two painters who were working in Miss McCoy's dressing room. And my theory That's is... That's enough. Never mind. Are you trying to make a sucker out of me? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You blew in one of my walls while you were knocking off the jewelry store next door. Sorry about the damage, but we'll make it good. Oh, thanks. Perhaps you can square me with Mike Amara, too. He's plenty suspicious. That's too bad. Maybe it hasn't occurred to you, but you're liable to get into Mr. O'Mara's hair. And I'd advise you to take a little trip. I think we can handle O'Mara. Well, I still advise you to take a little trip. Unless you want to handle me, too. What did he say? He just gave us 24 hours to get out of town. I was afraid of that. I'm leaving. Why not leave him? Oh, man. Well. Why don't we call on that guy? Why not on speaking terms? I think O'Mara should do the honors. O'Mara? Yeah, I think that check of Brewster's might interest him. Yeah, but you burned it. Did I? That's what Marty thought. But O'Mara won't think so. You wanted to see me, Mike? I did. I don't anymore. 
Mike. What is it? I'm in a hurry. I said, what is it? All right, I'll tell you. It's about Marty Malone, our pal. What would you say if I told you for a starter that he was a thief? I'd say you're either mistaken or crazy. I'll show you how crazy I am. Think back. A bunch of kids raiding a warehouse. What Marty Malone did to distract attention. Well, he's been pulling the same gag ever since. Been doing it right along. Tonight, he had the nerve to pull it in his own joint. He blew out a wall to cover a robbery next door. I don't believe it. Maybe you'll believe this. What's so surprising with this? It's only a motive for a murder. Brewster Welsh on Marty. Stop this check. Marty killed him, or had him killed, and used the same gag to cover it up, just as Joe suspected. All right. Listen to this. You know what happens to Welch's. But do you know where Malone was when your brother was knocked off? A friend. And you believe this? Of course I believe it. You believe a friend guilty of murder on an anonymous note? Look, Jerry. Who knew Joe suspected Brewster was murdered? Marty. Who knew Joe was going back there to check up? Marty. Who was out in the rain with no explanation? At the exact moment my brother was killed. Marty! You're wrong, Mike. I know you're wrong. You think that, huh? You're on his side. Okay. Mike. So you put that gun in your pocket. Give it to me. Oh, no. I'm saving that for another friend. Give it to me. I won't let you go until you do. You won't let me go. Get out of my way, Jerry Donovan. Nobody's going to stop me. That's where you're mistaken. You asked for it. Good evening, Father. Where's Mr. Malone? He's gone up to his apartment. Thanks. Oh, by the way, if Mr. O'Mara should happen to come along, don't let him in under any circumstances. All right, Father. Let me in the private entrance. I can't, sir. Oh, yes, you can. You let us in before. Now walk over there and open that door. I haven't got my key. I said open it. Quick. All right. Take it easy. There you are, sir. Get in there. circumstances, I think you'd better keep out of his way. Run away from him? Oh, I don't mean it like that. But he's like a madman. Give him a few days to cool off. In the meantime, maybe I can reason with him. Jerry, there's something I must tell you about Mike and Joe. Now, indirectly, I... Mike. Get from behind the cloth, Malone. Now, listen, Mike. Jerry, keep out of this. Now, wait a minute, Marty. You're not going to use that gun. Oh, yes, I am. Put it down, Mike. Oh, no. Do you know whose gun this is? It's Joe's. I said put it down. Get out of the way, Jerry. Are you going to put it down? I'm asking you the same question. Drop that or we all go. All right, go ahead. I'm not moving. I wouldn't want to live and see you a murderer. All right, Jerry. Turn around, mister. Slowly. Mike O'Mara. Say, what's going on here? He forced his way in here with that broth. He was going to kill Mr. Malone. Wait a minute. Why, Mike's an old friend of mine. Don't give me any papers, Malone. Let's go. Now, wait a minute. I back. said let's go. All 
All right, Jim. I wish we could make Mike see what a great wrong he's doing you, Marty. A great wrong. Jerry, a while ago I said I had something to tell you. Will you hear it now? All right. Go ahead. Mike has done me no wrong. It's the other way around. He's right. If it hadn't been for me, Joe would have been alive today. What do you mean? I didn't actually kill him. My hired hoodlums did. I wasn't in on it. I tried to stop them. But why did they kill him? Because he knew too much. Joe caught them doing my dirty work. What kind of dirty work, Marty? Oh, I sent them to collect a gambling debt. And they accidentally killed a guy. I didn't mean for them to kill him, no more than I meant to set fire to that warehouse. You know, when we were kids. It all goes back to that, Jerry. I know. What am I going to do? Maybe I can help. Hello, Mike. Come in. Hi. You sent for me. Here I am. And I'm glad to see you. Even if I did hope you'd come without being asked. Hello, Mike. What is this, a frame-up? Do you have to be framed to see your friend? I wasn't sure I had any. Well, here's two. Now, the reason I sent for you, I'll tell you. All right. It's about Mark. Uh, Malone. That's it. Mike, what's got into you? Last night I tried to kill Malone. This morning he refuses to prosecute me. He's playing the martyr, making himself a hero and me a heel. Now look, Mike, can't we reason this thing out sensibly? You did that last night, Jerry. It saved his life. And yours? Yes. That's what a friend's for. I'm glad you were there. And I'm glad to hear you say that. There's something else I'd like to hear you say, Mike. That I won't go off my nut again? I won't try to kill him again. Now you're beginning to talk sense. Yes, because I won't help him play martyr and go to the chair myself. That's where I want to see Malone. That's justice. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to get. The law will kill him, not I. That'll sort of even things up for Joe. Now you're going out of your head again. But I'm sorry. That's the way I feel about it. The way you feel about it. No, no, no. That's all he thinks of, himself. He doesn't want us and he doesn't need us. There's nothing more we can do. Now, don't judge him too harshly. Well, he dares to judge Marty. Has he the right? No, but, well, things will work out. I'm afraid they won't. Well, at least we'll keep on trying. Showing up pretty early tonight, aren't you? I had to see you, Marty. It's about all this. I wanted you to know whose side I was on. I know, Helen. I understand. You think I'm taking his part. It's your side I'm on, Marty. It's all off between Mike and me. Because of this? Yes. Isn't it terrible, Marty? He's like a crazy man. But who can blame him? I can and do. I don't ever want to see him again. Listen, Helen, you've got to hear his side. We've heard it, Jerry and I. We tried to reason with him, but it's no use. But did Jerry tell you both the truth? The truth about what? About Joe's death, about me. He didn't say a thing about you, Marty. Well, you're on the wrong side, Helen. The wrong guy. If Jerry won't tell you, I will. Tell me what? Look, don't blame Mike for all this. Surely you're not going to defend him after all he's done. Well, what has Mike done? Try to avenge his brother's death. His murder. Is that so terrible? Murder? You mean you think... I don't think I know. But how? Oh, Marty, surely it isn't true. Not what Mike thinks, no. I didn't go up and push you off the roof. But I might as well have. Helen, I've got to tell you the whole truth. The Polar Gardens looks like a cinch, but... If you please explain it to me just once more, I'll understand. The armored car calls for the dough at 10.30. Yeah. Oh, it's you. What'd you find out? 
There's only one guy, an engineer, on duty in the ammonia room at 10.30. Yeah, it looks like a swell setup to me. Yeah? There's some news in the last edition that may interest you. Seems Elmer has turned that check of Brewster's over to the DA. Hmm. Now I know I'm gonna leave town. Will you quit squawking? Well, I got a squawk coming. Suppose Malone starts singing to the DA to save his own neck. He won't sing. Yeah, well, who's gonna stop? We are. Now you're talking. This is the time to knock that guy off. Don't be in such a hurry. We still got Elmer to worry about. All right, so we take care of him, too. Now, I was coming to that. Maybe we can pay off the whole mob at once, huh? Wait a minute. Will somebody please tell me what this is all about? Hey, does Helen McCoy know you? No, but uh, if you're in an introducing mood... Uh... Call the cigarette club. Get her on the phone. The number circle six... Never mind. I know the number. Hello? Is this Miss Helen McCoy, the friend of Mike O'Mara's? Yes. Well, this is a pal of Mike's. Yes. And he's over at my place in pretty bad shape. Sick and delirious, and he's calling for you. Oh, where is he? Hotel Emerald, room 1701. Hotel Emerald, room 1701. Yes, of course, I'll come right away. Hotel Emerald, room 1701. Miss McCoy, she's called you on the telephone. Oh, thanks, Maria. Hello, Helen. Hello, Jerry. Mike's ill. He's at the Hotel Emerald, room 1701. I'm going there right away, and I wish you'd meet me there. Well, of course I will, Helen. Oh, thanks, Jerry. I'll see you there. All right, Ed, when she gets there, you entertain it. We telephone and get a hold of O'Mara. O'Mara? He'll come barging in here with a hundred coppers. No, he won't. He'll be coming all alone. You're going awfully fast for me. Good evening, Mr. Diamond. Mr. Malone in? I'll see. Never mind. We want a surprise. But Mr. Malone doesn't wish to be disturbed. Now, everything's going to be all right. Don't worry. Who is it? Hello, Marty. How are you tonight? Hello, fellas. Sit down. Will you have a drink? No, thanks. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. It's nice of you to drop in on me like this. And quite a coincidence, too. Look, Marty, let's bury the hatchet. We got a soft touch lined up. We want to cut you in. <laughs> Always thinking of my welfare, huh? What is this soft touch? Well, it goes something... Quiet. They're holding a big charity ice carnival at the Polar Gardens tonight. It ought to gross about 60 G's, and that's not hay. Yeah? Well, what's that to do with me? I'm coming to that. At 10.30, they transfer the box office take to an armored car. Only tonight, they won't. Go on. Your story fascinates me. Yeah? Well, here's the gag. They freeze their own ice, of course. That means a pretty big ammonia plant in the basement. Let me see that. Yes, miss. That's the gag. The armored car crew can't take the fumes. But with these masks, we can. And the 60 grand. And what am I supposed to do? I figured it'll take five men to handle this job right. I've always liked you, Marty, so I'm throwing this chance your way. My pal. Then you're in? You must think I'm an awful sap. First you frame Mike to bump me off, then you think out a crude idea like this to take care of me. Oh, you're slipping. You mean you don't want any part of it? And get a slug in my back? Not this evening. You are coming, you know. Don't make me laugh. Well, maybe this will make you laugh. I'm going to call Miss McCoy. She dropped in for a chat. What? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hello. Yes, this is Ed. Hello, Ed. Put Miss McCoy on. Go ahead, Marty. Say hello. Helen. Here, yeah, you can speak to Mr. Malone. Marty, they're holding me over here in the... Helen? You know better than that. Helen? Oh, 
Already, Marty? We got nothing against the girl. Or letting her go around midnight, unless we have trouble with you. All right. You win. Let's go. You won't be needing this, Marty. I'll take care of it. Hello? Hello. Is this Mike O'Mara? Yeah, who is it? Oh, the guy that sent him that bouncing check. Say, you're just the guy I want to talk to. Where are you phoning from? Whoa, let me do the talking. Your pal Malone is going to stick up the Polar Gardens tonight. Tonight? Yes, at 10.30. At 10.30? The ammonia room. The ammonia room? Hello. Hello. Marty will do more than just ask questions. He won't bother me. Well, Mike O'Mara will, so think up a good answer for him. Just a minute. I'm looking for Miss McCoy. She isn't here. Oh, I... I beg your pardon. I, I must have made a mistake. Operator, get me the house detective. Quickly, please. Hello. There's a little trouble on the 17th floor. Could you come up right away, please? Bring someone with you. Thank you. I'm getting out of here. What's the matter? That was a priest at the door. What's wrong with that? You don't think he was up here by accident, do you? Come on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold them downstairs. All right. Come on. Helen, are you all right? They set a trap for Mike and Marty at the polar gardens in the ammonia room. I'm trying to get the police. What we want is the emergency squad. Hello? Hello? Can I see you for a minute? All right, let's get your dirty work over. This is pretty tough to take, Diamond, but maybe I'll call the shots next time. Maybe. All set? Sure. That door leads to the lobby. When I give you the office, open it. When the fumes get good and thick, you yell and start the panic. Then we'll rush the box office. All right, I got it. Sam, spot yourself in there. When I give you this, bust a wide open. Why didn't I learn a trade? Put on your gas masks. Hey, boys. Mara. Keep your eye on Malone. staying here. All right, Marty. Got you right this time. 
This is where I pay you off. Okay, absolved. Have omnibus picatus to us. And Domine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. 